Hello, and welcome to In Conversation. Lovely to see so many people here. Greetings to our studio in Australia. Good morning. It's Saturday morning in Australia. Hello, Phil Evans. We'll be taking questions from Facebook Live and from the studio audience here. If you are present, when I ask your question, please stand so that Austin can see who is asking the question. It's a lot of pressure. Ah. <laughs> I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Austin Butler, somebody I've known for quite a while and had the pleasure of working with, and who has worked so diligently in his career and on his craft and is emblematic, I think, of the best of our profession. So I welcome Austin Butler. So please send in your questions on Facebook. Please like our page, share our page, and tell everyone you know who's interested in acting to tune in because they're gonna to wanna to hear from this guest. Austin, first, your story, how you came to be. How I came to be as a human or an actor? <laughs> no, once the stork dropped you. Okay, so once I was dropped, well, I was an extremely shy child. Um, so I, I've been struggling with that all day, knowing that so many people are going to be staring at me. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, um, I never really felt that I, I, I knew my tribe. I, I always was uh, quite a loner as a child. I would just stay inside and play the guitar for eight hours a day. I, I, my parents would try to get me, they would punish me by taking away the guitar and making me go play with other children. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then it, I, I actually, the, the true story is my, my stepbrother, um, my mother got remarried for a, a minute and, uh, and I had a stepbrother during that time who was a white kid but he always wanted an afro and so his his father was a hairdresser, and he gave him a perm, and, and he had, he just, it was, it was the most interesting look, because it never looked right, and, uh, and he was at the Orange County Fair, and got scouted by a background talent agent. We lived in Orange County at the time, and, uh, and, and so he came home, and he said, I, I've been scouted, I, I, and, and he kind of was, was thinking, I'm going to be the next Brad Pitt. And, and we all agreed, and so we, we drove up as a family to, to L.A. to uh, support him in auditioning. And when we got there, it turned out to be there was 300 children. It was this cattle call for a background talent agent. And, and I, I was there, and, and they said, oh, you should do it as well. And so they handed a list of all these commercials, Oreos and... Um, Welch's grape juice and that sort of thing, and and they said memorize one and then and then come up and do it in front of the camera here. And I was so incredibly nervous. I still I, I feel it now that like my knees shaking. <laughs> I uh, and so I memorized the Oreos one, and then um, later on, years later, I found out they didn't even have film in the camera. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, it was one of those scams. It was one of those, and and so and so they basically signed anybody who who paid a certain amount of money. Um, but I'm so grateful for that, and I'm grateful that my mom supported me in that because it, it, I loved movies, and, but I, it, it was never something that seemed possible. I didn't even know that it was a thing that you could do. And then, and then that situation allowed me to be on set. So as, as a 12-year-old kid, I was on Nickelodeon shows walking around in the background so you can see me in, in one thing of coverage in a green shirt and then when they turn around I'm in a yellow shirt walking because <laughs> everybody was basically 18 to look younger so there's 40 year olds playing elementary school Oh God! and then there's me and so I, I, I was just one of the kids and so I you start playing dodgeball with the other stars of the show and stuff and that's how I got my first manager was uh, doing extra work on Ned's Declassified, and um, I got my, my manager through that, and and then she put me in acting classes, and um, and it was really that that started the whole thing. That kind of started to chip away at the shyness, and I really I found my tribe through that. I realized, oh, these these children think like me. I, I didn't I didn't fit in with the sports kids. I didn't I, I didn't fit in with a lot of people, and um, and so that was really amazing. 
So I, I, I owe my career to, to a perm. <laughs> Do you still get nervous? Absolutely, I'm nervous right now. I, um, <laughs> interestingly, I didn't, I didn't get I, as nervous for opening night of Iceman Cometh as I thought I would because we, we had so much time rehearsing that my focus carried through. So, so maybe I was nervous, but it didn't feel the same. I, I get much more nervous in auditions than I, than I did during the course of that run because it was, I knew where it was directed. Mm -hmm. So the energy was directed at, it, it, was, it was directed in character almost. So I was nervous to see this guy that I wanted as my father. Um, I was nervous to see him after all these years. And um, so, so it, you had a place to put it. Yeah, so I, I guess that that's kind of what it was. But I, I, I had a little bit of a freak out because I thought I should be nervous. <laughs> Why am I not nervous? And then I thought, is this a bad thing? And then I realized, oh, I'm feeling the same things, but it's just directed in a different place. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, we're going to take some questions from in the room, also from Facebook Live. Please like our page, share our page, and send in your questions for Austin Butler. This is from Nicole. It is, there she is. Hello. <laughs> Where is the balance between only accepting projects you're passionate about and taking whatever work you can get, especially when you're just starting out? Yeah, it's an interesting balance. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I, um, in the beginning, uh, some people have had incredible careers. I look at somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio, and, and he, he, he's had, from a very young age, has just jumped from incredible project to incredible project. And that's, he was the guy that I always looked up to as a, as a kid. And, and the, but the, the trajectory wasn't the same for me, where I, I had to do little Nickelodeon shows just to get one line, and then that led to two lines and something else, and then, and then it was just kind of grabbing a, whatever I could get. And um, I love that there's this video of Philip Seymour Hoffman talking about acting and, and how we, we really, a, a, any opportunity that we get to act, even if it's just in an audition, that we're, we're, we're getting to act in a room that somebody else paid for. And, and so that's, that changed the way that I looked at it, where I, where I could be grateful for every, everything that I got to do, because I would learn something from it. And, um, so as far as the balance goes, if it, if it fundamentally is incongruent with your values, then I would say to, to not do it. But, but each thing, even things that I haven't been proud of have led to something that I, I never knew would have happened otherwise. Um, and, and, I, and then I've gone through periods of saying no to things and, uh, and, and looked back and thought, wow, there, there, there's been all these doors that have opened and then I'm praying for all these doors to open. And uh, they've been open. Just, uh, so, so if you walk through, amazing things can happen. I remember a major decision you had to make not too long ago. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Because it's a tough one to turn down work, isn't it? Yeah, that was that was one of the first times that that there was a there was a really it was a big studio film, um, and I and I had to decide if that was going to be where I was going to go, and I still am at a point. I mean, we were just talking about this. I, I, there was a part of me that thought, I, I I'm a beginner. I, well, what do I have to say today? You know, and and. Um, so I, I have that same thing when taking roles. I remember being the kid who just wanted one line in a Disney show. Um, and, and so I'm so incredibly grateful for the opportunities, but then at a certain point, I, I've, I've had to go, okay, well, well where, where do I really, where do I really want to go? What, what, what is really going to challenge me? And, and that's, it, it's been more on the, on the craft level for me that's been helping make those decisions. Is this, is this something that scares me? If it is, bless you. Um, <laughs> is it something that scares me or is it, um, is it something that I, I, I'm truly, truly passionate about has been that thing. So I did say no to that thing and 
And I'm happy for it because I wouldn't have been able to do Iceman otherwise. But I didn't know Ice, Iceman was, was going to come. <laughs> Why did you want to do a play? Um, I grew up in L.A. and we, we never really had, uh, it, was, it was, I mean, I grew up in Orange County and, and so there wasn't, it wasn't a part of the culture so much. And so I, I and then um, I was doing this show called The Carrie Diaries in New York. And during that time, I, I started going to plays, and um, and I saw Mark Rylance do Richard the Third in the Twelfth Night, and uh, I just remember crying in the theater because I, I I felt as though I'd never seen Shakespeare before, mm -hmm. and I and it, it something struck me so deeply that I, I thought, oh that that's what theater has to offer. We're, we're here and we're experiencing something in this moment together and it will never be quite the same and and that was so beautiful to me and, and so then at that point then I then I got addicted and so I started just going as as often as I could and um, and then I ended up I ended up asking my agent I said if, if, can you see if there's anything um, anything happening and would you and share like, their reaction the they, they, they really didn't think that I should do a play <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but now they support it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, 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 so I did a play. Uh, so they, they sent me an audition for this play at the Geffen. And uh, this is the first play that I ever auditioned for. And I went in and I, I, I did my best. And I left and I, I called my girlfriend. And I said, I totally didn't get that. I, that I, he didn't even want to see the third scene. I worked so hard on the third scene, and then I asked him if I could do the third scene, and he, he kind of was like, okay, yeah, you can do the third scene. And so then I did it, and then I thought, oh, geez, it wasn't good enough, and so then I left, and, and then they called that day and offered me the part. And, and so that was really, that was amazing. And then so I got that experience. And then, um, and then after that, then I went off and did some TV things, and then, um, and then, and then I started getting the itch again. So I'd fly out to New York for two weeks just to watch plays, and, and so I'd see 14 plays in two weeks, and um, and it was it was just I was just mainlining theater, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it really it was it was amazing, and and, um, and then and then I met with everybody that I possibly could. I, I I I called my agent and I said, can you can you just introduce me to everybody that you know in the New York theater scene? And so I just started. Meeting everybody and and while that didn't directly get me to do a play in New York, it it start it was the seed that was planted. And that's what I'm realizing more and more that that life isn't this series of enormous things. It's those little things that you do every day, um, and those little seeds that are planted that that have to take time to cultivate. And, um, uh, yeah, and then and then so the way that Ice Man Cometh came about was. Uh, well, I, I have a tendency to not answer my phone and to disappear for months. And uh, so my agent called me and, and said, all right, he, he got a hold of me and he said, I've got something I'm sending to you. If you don't put this on tape in the next three days, I'm going to come over there and throw you in your own pool. And, uh, and I thought, that doesn't sound too bad, but tell me, wh what is it? And, and, and he told me what it was. And he said, it's, it's Denzel Washington and Ice Man Cometh. And, um, and so I said, all right, I'll start working on it right now. And I, I called one of my best friends and we put it on tape uh, the next day. And well, I met you the, later on the same day. <laughs> you did. I said, can we work on this now? And, and I and gave we, you some excruciating did. homework to do on that. Excruciating, which I'm still trying to get over. <laughs> no, no joke. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because it meant digging into really uncomfortable yeah. yeah. Areas. Yeah. And you did. Yeah. Which got you the part. And if I can say, you know how good you have to be coming from LA to book Broadway? Because they are snobby. <laughs> you have to be even better. And you were. How much memorization did it entail? Quite a lot. Um, it's a four hour play, um, three intermissions, and. Um, uh, I was scared out of my mind, and so I, I, I paid my uh, 
a friend to to just read with me every day. And so we would I, I would just do exercises and throw a ball while I'm just doing the scene and just trying to get it in my body. And and by the time that I showed up at rehearsal, I was I, fully I, off book. Yeah, word for word because I ran it with you. You were word for word. That's discipline and repetition. Yeah. So first day of rehearsal, you had all four hours memorized. Yeah. Which paid off. Uh, this is from Brittany. We're taking questions from the live audience from Facebook. Please like our page, share our page, and send us your questions. Australia, wake up. Send us some questions. <laughs> this, where's Brittany? There she is. Okay. Did you ever go through a drop between jobs, bookings? Do you have any advice coping mechanisms to persevere through it? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I have uh, some intentional drops um, between. Uh, <laughs> I, is everybody okay? I, uh, I, I between seasons of the Carry Diaries, I, I purposely didn't work, and I would just I just played music, just kind of because I felt like my soul wasn't um, fulfilled. Um, and so I, I, I would do that, and, and then there's been other times where just nothing has has clicked, and, and um, so I so I haven't worked for that reason. And it's a really weird thing that we do as actors, and and as any sort of artist, you have so much time, and and it, it can it can eat you alive um, if you don't have structure in your days, and uh, and especially if, if going from something where you if you're working and then you have a lot of creating things, doing things that I'm, I'm interested in um, uh, writing short films and filming them and and, uh, um, and uh, doing things that I, I hope future characters would do. So riding horses or, or learning how to ride a motorcycle or any of these things because that's, that's another thing, realizing once you get on set and you got to ride that horse. If you're having to think about the horse, then all the other stuff is so hard. So anything that you're interested in, uh, do it. Um, that that's that's a big thing. Um, During the Carrie Diaries, do you remember the scene where you had to go into your girlfriend's bedroom and look for newspaper clippings? I think it's yeah. a great story to share because it's so much about what yeah, we do yeah. here, making place and stuff. Yes. Yeah, I um, yeah, I went on set to rehearse, and, and they had they had xeroxed, just oh, there they were supposed to be papers everywhere and stuff, and when, when we needed to, I think it was a scene where we needed to find her sister. Yeah, she'd run away. Um, she'd run away, and and so we're we're searching for clues, and it, they xeroxed just a ton of this exact same page from a newspaper, and so they were everywhere, and they were very uninspiring. Um, and the whole room kind of just felt stale. And thankfully, we, we rehearsed right before lunch, so then I knew I've got the entire lunch break to just play in that space and kind of figure it out. So I just went in there like a child and, and started putting things around and figuring out, okay, how could I, I and what why could did I be you do searching that? for? Why did you do that? Why did I do that? Um, how did it help you? Well, it made me feel that I was actually looking for things yeah. and that I was actually alive. And that's a good answer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when you had to audition for the Shannara Chronicles, it was at a particular time in your life and the scene was specific mm. to things that were actually happening. Did you feel comfortable to talk about that? Because it was a very brave thing you did. Yeah. I, um... It was, I think it was three weeks before, three weeks before my mother passed away, and uh, I I didn't really w want to work, but I I, I kind of needed to, and um, and so I I, I I allowed some meetings to happen. I remember I actually had to go read. Um, I had a callback for this thing with Cameron Crowe right before. And in that scene, I'm just just crying my eyes out, and and so I went over there and I was doing that, and and then I was so emotionally depleted from that, and and sort of 
it, re it released something in my soul and, and, I, and I, I love him as a filmmaker and so is, I felt really connected is to my, my soul and my body and, and, then, and then I had to race across town and I, I ended up being two hours late to this, to this Shannara meeting and uh, I, I felt horrible but I, I, there's nothing that I could really do and so I went in there and, and, and then the scene was talking about um, my mother having passed away um, and, and so I was already so just in my body and then with that that, that I could just speak about it and it was completely uh, truthful and, and in a way I, I felt that's one of the things that we get to do as actors and, and that it can be the burden of an actor but, it, but it's, it's sort of the meaning for me at this point at least of, of art and uh, connecting us all as humans and, um, and so I, I was able to do that and in a way it was cathartic you know um, but, but it was very Scary. hard and I didn't want to do it I, I didn't and I actually turned something down recently and, and regretted it because I, I felt cowardly because it was a scene where I was having to pray um, that, that God would heal my wife from cancer and I had done the same thing praying that my mom would be healed from cancer and it was just too close and, and at, at that time I did it and, and this I just thought I don't want to be on set having to do that right now and um, Cause especially after going into that place yeah and after this last year of the places that I went I just I thought this might not be healthy for me right now so I did I did say no to that but afterwards I thought oh, you could have been a little stronger <laughs> uh, Yelena okay back there uh, do you ever get in your head while acting if so how do you get out of it to be present in the scene? <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's the weird thing, huh? We know that we're, we know we're playing pretend, and um, yeah, it happens all the time. That's the, that was a fascinating thing about doing a play, and, and some nights I would be much less in my head, and then other nights, especially the night after, a really good night than just trying to do what I did the, la the previous night. And so then I was in my head going, oh, that wasn't as good as last night. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then you start going, oh no, stop thinking about that, just be in the scene. And then I'm judging myself for thinking about <laughs> being in my head. And, and that's a vicious cycle. Um, and, and so for me, it, 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 and I'm still learning it. I, completely but it's it's a matter of sometimes it'll be like a physical thing like feeling the, ch the chair or or a big thing is feeling my feet on the ground realizing oh I'm holding my breath and I'm, uh, and so breathing um, and and then really where I'm focusing and uh, it, the same thing as with nerves uh, focusing on are you are you getting what I'm what I'm saying to you right now or, or or I'm trying to understand what you're telling me, or um, any of those things. It, it, taking the focus as much off of, uh, off of me. That, but like I said, it, it, isn't, it isn't easy, um, and I'm still learning it. But those are some things that help. Great. Uh, Jenny? Out oh, there, OK. Uh, was the jump in acting styles from the Shannara Chronicles to Iceman cometh hard? What adjustments did you have to make? It, it was different. It, um, I think all acting is hard, uh, for me at least, but I, I, it, um, it was different, it diff slightly. Um, but they serve each other in a way, because you're still trying to, there's all, they're the same sort of questions that I'm asking myself. And, um, but that type of acting, that type of acting, I mean, in, in all actuality, in, in, well, sometimes you're fighting a, a fictional demon that's flying down <laughs> the sky at you, and, and that, in those moments, it, it feels most childlike because I, I truly, I, I'm, I'm just pretending in the way that I did when I was a kid in my backyard on a fake horse or something, you know. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is, it is different. Um, and what about eight shows a week? 
Yeah, well, we did seven because it was a four-hour show. No, that's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, so on Saturdays, you do eight hours. Um, yeah. So how do you have the stamina to do that, and what, what does it entail? Stamina. Um, I think I'm, I, I'm incredibly grateful to get to do it. So that energetically helps, um, because each day, I, 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 if I started to feel tired, I would kind of just remind myself of what I'm getting to do. Mm. Um, and and, um, and then having constructive ways of, of uh, refreshing my mind. And um, I rode the subway every day from Brooklyn to Times Square, and, and that, was, that was a really those are some really special moments because you finish the show and either you feel that uh, I now understand what it means to be an actor or uh, the next night you go, I'm the worst actor in the world I don't deserve to be on this stage and, um, but then once, once you're in the subway and, and with all these other people and you realize everybody's going through their own thing and, and th that uh, it kind of washes over you. All the humanity washes over you, and, and that, that helped me a lot. Yeah. We're taking questions from Facebook, from the live audience. Facebook Live, send us your questions, like our page, share our page, and get everyone you know to tune in. This question actually is from Facebook. Okay, it doesn't have a name. Uh, what made you so passionate about this career, and what were your obstacles that you had to overcome? I think it's what kind of what I was saying earlier. I I, I had no, uh, I didn't feel that I fit in many places, and so that once I once I found that oh this is something I'm actually interested in, um, and my parents saw it as well, and and I owe everything to my mom quitting her job and driving me to auditions every day. I can't imagine what it would be if you didn't have that sort of support, and and uh, so I'm just endlessly grateful to her for that. Um, and uh, and and yeah, and and there are days where I, where I question it. I question I question the meaning uh, in it at times, and and then I watch a movie that really hits me, or I watch a play or or something, and then I go, oh, that's why. Mm -hmm. It's it's that feeling, and and to be able to give even a small portion of what I've what I've received from so many am amazing. People who created things that um, to be a part of that, I'm, I'm I'm incredibly proud and grateful to be a part of that, and I think that 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 carries through. Beautiful. Uh, this is from Nadja, who I think is here. Where, there she is. Okay. Hello. Uh, which role was the most life changing for you? Mm. Life changing depends. Uh, I feel that I have multiple lives at this point. <laughs> and, I, and I look back on certain, I look back on, on the first job I was ever given and, and the f that made me feel that it was possible. Um, and so that was life changing. Um, but uh, but the, I feel when I, when I look back th that that was a different person almost. When I, uh, you know, I, to 12 years old to now I'm 27. And um, I, I, uh, of late, it, it was it was Iceman, um, because it it was it was so challenging that it it and I and I almost didn't think it was possible, and then learning that oh I, I can do more than I thought I could, that was uh, that was life changing, um, and uh, and then and then that's led to things that have been. Uh, life changing in their own part. Great. This is from Jimena. Mm -hmm. There she is. Uh, what was the meaningful moment that helped you grow in your career? Um, damn it, Howard Fine. That's that that it, it's joking in a, in a sense, because but it, it is completely true because I, I didn't have a grasp of craft before we met, and so I was shooting in the dark and some sometimes there was there was it was inconsistent, um, so that was enormously meaningful and and um, I'm so grateful for you. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Matt. <laughs> okay, I have to recover from that. <laughs> favorite color? <laughs> uh, okay, this is from Sean. Where are you, Sean? Are you here? There he is. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite part of the process? Mm. Favorite part of the process? <sighs> I have a lot of favorite parts. The first one that came to me was the feeling of we've talked about this a lot before the, the, the feeling of when you first read something um, and it feels very blurry and, and, and then as it sort of starts clicking in and, and the, you, you, you see the things that are different in this person and then you see the things that are same, the same and, and once those start linking up that's a very exciting moment to me and uh one of my least favorite parts is when it just stays blurry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then I've heard Daniel Day Lewis talk about that. How he says he, he uh, he'll spend months in, in apparent listless rumination, and then hoping that something comes out of it. Um, and that listless rumination is that moment where it's ah, it's blurry. I don't know where this is. And then sometimes it clicks, and then sometimes you get done. I, I get done, and I go well. well <laughs> this is from Australia. It's from Phil Evans. Hi, Hello, Phil. Hello, Australia. Good morning. Uh, is there anything that you've learned from working with Denzel Washington that you take with you into your work? That guy is so full of just uh, <laughs> so much life and, and so much wisdom. Um, I will just say the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, which is, he was so incredibly newly alive every night that it was, it was, it was animalistic. And, and, it, and, it, and it gave me a freedom as well to know, ooh, we don't have to do what we've done. And we're not just trying to be different, but, but I never know what to expect. So then it keeps me on my toes, and then I started getting excited by that and then wanted to give that to others, and, and so then, so he, he, he creates an environment of that. Even in rehearsals, there was moments where he would have a chair over his head, or he would, I mean, it was just the craziest things that you, you would think, wow, I, I, just, I don't even know what you're doing right now. <laughs> he, he just tried everything. And, um, <laughs> and, and also, I, I've been plagued by this idea of perfection for so many years. Um, uh, the idea that there's a perfect way of doing the scene. <laughs> Some people are recognizing that. <laughs> him over there. You say plagued by an idea of perfection. What does yeah. that mean? <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's, it's the feeling that there, there is a right way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right? They're all laughing because they know this. Remember, every artist struggles with this. It's, it's yeah. common, right? Yeah. It's just good to hear yeah. you articulate it. It, it really, um, and then and then learning that there might be a wrong way to do it, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but there are many more right ways than uh, you th I initially think when I when I read something. And, and so watching Denzel, that was a huge thing. Is I realized there would be a night, there would be a random Tuesday where he would give a performance that I thought that's the best performance of this I've ever seen. And, and, and then the next night he wouldn't feel the need to do it at all. A moment where he's breaking down crying or something, the next time he just says it. And then a couple days later he gives it, 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 this performance where I go, that, that's the greatest performance. But then I'm thinking back to the Tuesday and realizing that there was no one that was better. Um, I think a lot of people yeah. misunderstand. They think continuity means be exactly the same every time rather than be alive at every time. Yeah, yeah. Because it really is about that. Absolutely. Just was reading that uh, chapter or, uh, in Udo Hagen's book talking about expectation mm -hmm. um, and Lorette Taylor. Mm -hmm. And the glass menagerie. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I wish I could have seen those performances. Yeah, but you just experienced it. 
just did it. Yeah. This is from Allison. Mercy. Okay, right up there. Can you talk about the audition process for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. How you got the script, callbacks, etc. Yeah. Uh, um, I was I was doing the play, and um, which was such a blessing because I um, with with some somebody like Quentin Tarantino, I, he's such a hero of mine that I I think if I wasn't occupied so much with well, I know I got I got to leave in an hour to go do this play, and then I could have overthought the whole process. But basically, they said they want you to put yourself on tape for this this thing, and and um, they're going to FedEx you sides, um, and then they're going to physically pick them up so that way you can't release them. And so they they FedEx paper sides and. Um, they wanted me to put myself on tape for two different roles. It was a scene with two people talking to each other, a bad, uh, s bad guy and a good guy. And so I put myself on tape for the good guy and the bad guy. I actually did it. I didn't have anybody, and I didn't have time to get another actor to read with me. So I actually recorded my own voice and put it on top of the camera. It, it is there's such an inorganic way of doing it. Um, Thankfully, those those times, the Shannara type stuff has helped because of the fact that I've, I've had to do scenes where there's just a tape on on the wall, and you're acting to that. Um, so I just did the best I could. I, I just thought, okay, well, I'm not going to just not put myself on tape for this. Um, so so I I did that and and uh, and sent it in. And I just and I, I also I used to hate taping because there's this thing. It's the perfection thing, where I, where you go. Oh, can do better, or I start sending it to people and saying, oh, what do you think, what do you think? <laughs> and with that, it was completely, I'm just gonna do what I think is fun. And that's, uh, I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do right now. And that was such a huge lesson, because I, I didn't have anybody else's opinion in my mind. I didn't, ha I didn't even have anybody else to look at me and think, wait, are you thinking that I was bad right now? <laughs> uh, so then I just, who are you referring to? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, yeah. So I I put it on tape, and sent it, and and a couple days later they said uh, uh, Quentin's watched it, and he and he really really loved what you did, and he's gonna watch it again, and then they may want you to fly to L.A. on a Monday on your day off, and and so I uh, so I, I thought no, uh, incredible. I'm I'm just I'm I'm saying yes to to, to life right now. If whatever you guys. Send me, I'll, I'll do it. And so then they said, okay, next Monday, we, we want you to fly to LA. And, and, uh, and so I finished the show. I finished the Sunday show. It was an afternoon show, and drove straight to the airport and flew to LA. Slept for a couple hours, and then woke up and went to his office at 10 a.m. And by and I was there until 10 p.m. And uh, he gave me the job that day. Um, but. The, and then I flew back and, and drove straight to the theater and did the play. Um, and uh, so what did he put you through in terms of audition? Well, it did was you have it was such a it was such an amazing experience because they didn't send me anything beforehand. I didn't even know who I, I was auditioning for. I thought I was auditioning for one of the parts I put myself on tape for. Um, so because I knew, they said you'll get there. He'll give you some, he'll talk to you for a bit. Uh, they're gonna have a bunch of other actors there and then, uh, and then they'll take your phones away and then uh, give you these sides. So I thought, uh, it's amazing. I, I know that I can't overthink this at all. Uh, <laughs> and, and that means that all, the, all I have to focus on is being as present as I possibly can be. Um, and so, I could see myself otherwise being on the flight and, and reading over these things and, and just doing all the work that I possibly could. But instead, I, I was smelling my food and, and, and talking to the person next to me. And I felt so alive by the time that I got there that I got there and, and they said, OK, so you know who you're auditioning for? And I said, not really. And, and, and they said, um, <laughs> OK, so this, you're auditioning for uh, this. Uh, trying to think of how much I'm allowed to say. 
It's out there that I'm doing this part. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, so, so they said, you're auditioning for Tex Watson, and I didn't really know much about Tex Watson. And she said, um, and you've done your research on him, right? And I said, <laughs> I said yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, they hadn't taken away my phone at that point. So then I was the first person there. And so I, I went off into the corner, and I'm watching videos of him speaking. And, and, and at that point, then I'm panicking. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was supposed to have done my research on this guy. And so I'm, I'm reading everything I can. And, and, then, and then the other actors start showing up. And uh, it's me and one other guy, and then a bunch of girls. And, and they basically just mixed and matched us. And, uh, and uh, I, yeah, and so then he shows up, and they take our phones away. And he was just the most incredible uh, director. And, and it was just the most fun experience. And it gave me about eight or 10 pages of these scenes. And, and, and there were scenes that you would see in a play. Um, and did doing going the back play, and forth and back and forth. Talk about how doing the play helped you with that. Uh, yeah, and endlessly. I mean, I could go into it knowing, okay, well, I'm doing a four-hour play every day. I, how how hard is eight pages going to be? You know, um, and not to diminish it at all. No, um, it's it, it is different, but but there was a sense of being worked out. Yeah, right? yes. Yeah, you're going to the gym every day, and right. and then yeah. So so that yeah, it worked out well. Yeah. How was your experience working with some of the actors you got to work with? I mean, they're my heroes. They're, they're, uh, and it can be it can be nerve wracking meeting your heroes. And uh, like I was talking about earlier with Leo, like he he he's he's the guy that I looked up to the most. And and then it's Brad Pitt and, and these guys that I I mean honestly between the two of them, I don't know. There's m many others that I've looked up to from such a young age. Since then, there's been. Uh, maybe a couple years after, then I, I discovered uh, Charles Lawton, and uh, I discovered him. And, and, and <laughs> 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 nice of you. Yeah. How do you handle that things. when you've got to play a scene opposite somebody that you've grown up looking up to? Yeah, um, you just I, I've, I've come to the conclusion now that I'm I'm not there to be anybody's best friend. I'm not here to go out to dinner with you or, or I mean, I, if we do fine that's great but I'm here to do my job to the, the best that I can and, and so I just went into it with that mentality and it meant that we had this mutual respect for each other and, um, and then eventually then we, we got to have conversations and, and I got to, to talk about acting and, and our stories and that was uh, I went home beaming those those nights. It was really pinch me moment after. Pinch Did you get any special advice from either of them? Um, I was thinking about that. In a way, I feel uncomfortable talking about it too much because uh, I, uh, in uh, private conversations, sure. I never want to talk about. But one thing that Leo said that I just loved was he said, "It's not rocket science." <laughs> <laughs> He said it's the specificity, and that shows up when when you get really specific. It it, it shows up on on the camera, um, and so if you do your work, it, it's it's. I've it's heard there. that. <laughs> okay, we're taking questions from Facebook from the live audience. Please like our page, share our page, send us questions for Austin Butler. We've only gotten one from Australia so far. Uh, this is from Siete, who's here somewhere. Are you Siete? There she is. Hello. Okay. How do you prep mentally before shooting? Um, mentally. I, uh, I mean, it's, uh, do as much of the homework as possible, so that way I'm not having to think about certain things as much when I was, so, so then I'm able to be more present when I'm actually there. And then, and then as far as the, the, the mental side, it's, it's so interesting, the, the differentiation between life, technique, acting, all, all, it, it all just kind of starts blending, so I, I, I'm, um, yeah, for, for me, if I don't feel that I'm in my body, or my breath. I mean, the, the stuff that you do is just remarkable. Um, 
the, the breath, if, my, if I feel constricted, then I know that I'm not going to be as um, available emotionally. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so getting my body in a good place, uh, my mind, I mean, I, I, I try to meditate every day. I, I mean, in the, in the pragmatic sense, I'm, I, it, just getting as present as possible. Um, I, uh, y yeah, I, I notice it even even today, leading up to this. I, I this morning at breakfast, I kind of was thinking, oh, geez, what do we got to talk about? And I was thinking, and then I realized I wasn't I, I wasn't appreciating my food, and I wasn't. I wasn't really a, a, a present to the people that were in the coffee shop and that sort of thing. And so then I just kind of threw all that away and I thought, well, okay, we're just going to come oh. up here and figure it out. And, and sometimes, and that's the thing, I love the analogy that you have about you're, you're making this stew that you're putting in carrots and, and beef and uh, peas and whatever else you, you like. And then, <laughs> and then, and then you, you, I don't eat beef, but then you eventually put the spoon in and you taste it and you see what comes up. But... Uh, if, if I'm not relaxed, uh, 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 then I, my mind will be trying to, it'll pre-shape it, and then I'll be going, okay, I'm going to try to taste a pea right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want pre-shape? No. Uh, for those of you who are watching, Austin was referring to Mr. David Corey and the SFA program. That's right. Uh, this is from Chaz. There he is. He's also been told he resembles you. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, after you just wrapped a project, what do you do to put that character to rest? How long does it take before you're ready to take on another role? That's, that's a good question. Depends. Um, what we were talking about earlier. Uh, when we first started working on Don Parrot in, in Iceman, uh, there. <coughs> One of the first things you said to me is, is he has a poison inside of him that is that is just rising, rising through the entire play, and it, so so that was one of the first things that I started finding. Where's that poison in me? And uh, and it started to to eat away at me. But in in a while doing the play, I had the outlet. So there, there was a cathartic moment at the end of the night. And, and th then I went right from that to, to I did the, uh, this movie with Jim Jarmusch and then, and then the thing uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then, so those kind of carried me through in this way of going, oh wow, that I, I can now be immersed in this other thing. When I finished the, the last day on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, then, then I go home and then I don't, then I have all that time that we were talking about and, and that's when the poison started to rise. Um, and, I, and I realized, oh, I've been, I've been bringing this on for months and months and months, and even on a scientific level, thinking about the neural pathways in my brain, training them to, to link myself to feelings of Self-hatred and and all all these all these really things that eventually lead the character to killing himself. And and so all those things, I started to have them, but they weren't able to be um, released released through through these uh, imaginary circumstances. So then they started to feel real. And and it felt very dangerous and scary. And uh, and and I, I so I started. Going to therapy and and realizing, oh wow, I, I I've been bringing so much up that you gotta have healthy ways of of releasing that because it's dangerous otherwise. I think. Um, but as, as and as far as yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, therapy for sure. Um, bringing structure into my days has helped a lot, um, and and then creating my own creative outlets. Uh, so. Writing and, and and that sort of thing and, and playing music and rather than allowing and and that's sort of the way that that the character has been washing slowly. Um, I, I think. That's I hope that's not a pretentious way of yeah, describing it. Awesome. That was excellent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is from Odell. Where is he? Right. There. 
Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, what is something you've had to sacrifice or change to have a successful career? Sacrifice or change? Um, I think I think it's very easy as actors to be. We can be. Uh, we can get away with laziness. Um, and uh, because nobody nobody sees what you what you do when nobody else is watching, mm -hmm. and but those are the things that I think makes have have made such a big difference for me. Um, is is what what's the daily work the, that I th I think of musicians a lot. Uh, somebody who plays the violin and, and how much they practice. And that's always been a thing with me. I mean, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Howard. I, I, I kind of know a lot of your thoughts on that, but if you have any new thoughts, <laughs> but, but, um, but, I mean, any, any recent... <laughs> we can have a <laughs> lesson right now. Yeah, uh, about that, about how to practice your instrument daily, you know. Uh, I think class is very, very important. And, and, well, and you, we make a problem. habit of in between gigs, you're here. As much as I can be. Absolutely. And that's... That speaks because yeah. we don't stay in shape unless we do what we do all the time. Yeah. Right? And class is probably one of the more challenging things to do. Yeah, it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, this is from Isabel. Where are you? Oh, there she is. Okay. How did you secure your agent? She's an Australian, by the way. Oh, wow. Hello. Um, I, my, f my very first agent was, it's that story about my manager earlier, her name was Pat Cutler, she was amazing, she, she, um, she set me up on meetings with a couple of agents, and, um, and uh, Jackie Lewis, that was my, that was my first agent, um, and I, I went in and, and we had a conversation and I, I, I prepared a monologue and I, I did that for her in, in, in a room and, um, and so that's how I that's how I signed with my first agent, um, and then and then I, I was with that agency for a while, and then I was off in New Zealand um, doing a movie, a uh, wonderful little movie uh, called Aliens in the Attic, <laughs> <laughs> very mysterious title, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, but I was fifteen at that time, and and uh, and then Endeavor called, and and they. Uh, which has now become William Morris Endeavor, and, um, and then and they wanted to have a meeting over Skype, and so we talked, and um, so I ended up I ended up signing with them, and so I, I sort of had two agencies for a while, um, and then uh, and then I've, I've I've had agents those the two agents that had signed me from Endeavor and have now left agencies and become managers and that sort of thing, and um, and a guy who was my he was an assistant at William Morris, and. Uh, and we became really close friends. And then he got promoted. And when he got promoted, I said, I, I need him on my team because he's incredible. And now he's my main guy. And, uh, and so it's incredible because we, we were friends first and, and now, um, now he, he's, he's crushing it. He's, he's awesome. <laughs> James Farrell. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this is from Facebook. Many actors talk about being bicoastal. What does it mean to you and your work frequently traveling between LA and New York? Um, I, uh, I feel very fortunate to have been able to go back and forth. Uh, and because there is, I mean, the, the, the theater culture out there is, is something that I'd always been craving here. And, and now I'm realizing we do have a, a lot of Amazing plays that are happening here, and um, but I just didn't really know about them. I had to find, seek them out more. Um, and uh, so, as far as being bicoastal, yeah, that, that that's been that's been the big thing for me. And then it's just a different energy. Uh, um, so, uh, y the the story about riding the subway—that's something I wouldn't have been doing here. I would have been in my car driving here. And um, I think that there's there's value in, in both places completely, and, and it also helps me to appreciate the other city a lot. Um, so I, I I do yeah. We just we just got a place out in New York recently. And yes. Yeah. 
there's constant tension between New York, LA. I play it up when I go to Australia between Sydney and Melbourne. It's the same yeah. yeah. But both both cities have terrific things to offer. Yeah, they, right? they do. Uh, we're taking questions from Facebook, from the live audience. Please like our page, share our page, send us your questions. This is from Facebook, but also one of our students, Paula Fairbrother. What's something you learned from Howard early on? You better have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> After all the nice things he's already said. That you still think about or call upon when rehearsing, and is it still prevalent for you today? Um, you do have a timeless nature about your teaching. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, so, so every, uh, many things come back. I, there's, I'll be on set and I'll have his voice in my head after a scene. <laughs> what work put it in my Yeah, I mean, expectations have been a big thing with me lately. And, and I'll kind of go through periods of, I, I delve really deep into something and, and, and sort of make that my obsession. And then, and then I, I kind of trust that it's there for a bit and I go and I explore something else. Um, and, and Let's so. talk about the homework you did for Iceman, because it's a period piece, and I think that it's be interesting for everybody to hear that that was things you had to do. The yeah. anarchist movement, for example. Yeah, yeah. So I, I read Emma Goldman's book. Um, and she was she was one of the leading female anarchists at that time, and she was sort of the one that Eugene O'Neill based um, the, the, my character Don Parrot to his mama, and. Uh, and uh, um, went to the Tenement Museum in, in New York and got to see the size of the apartments that they lived in. And I just tried to soak in as much of it as possible. And so that way it felt, it, it, it felt real to me. Um, I, I started dressing uh, in three-piece suits and just I, every day I'd be in New York just walking in, in a three-piece suit and a little chain and uh, everything. And, um, yeah. And you thought about where that bar was. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Geography of the whole thing. And, um, yeah, and then, I mean, it's just amazing with the internet now, the, the amount of homework that you can do. Stuff that we can, yeah. Right. It's at our fingertips. So you had period work to do. You put yourself in it. You had to understand the world at that time. Yeah. This is also from Australia. Hello, Marcel. Hello, Marcel. Uh, what do you prefer to do now, TV or movies or theater? Depends on the day. It really, they're all, they all serve each other, I think. And that's the amazing thing now with, with TV is, is that for a minute I thought, I don't want to do TV anymore. I'm, I'm, I, I really don't want that. Uh, because I, I, I had done certain things where I, I didn't feel that people cared as much as I did and it, and it seemed like a paycheck to people and um, and it, it was just so quick that everybody was looking at their watch all the time and it didn't feel uh, I didn't feel fulfilled and, but but there's so much I just watched Escape at Danamora has anybody seen that yet? yeah it's exceptional right um, it's Benicio Del Toro and Paul Dano and Patricia Arquette and they're just so and Ben Stiller directed it and it's sensational so uh, watching that, I, I go, it's, it's just incredible that we have that sort of content out there. There's never been a time where we have more of that uh, kind of amazing content. So yeah, TV, absolutely. Films, uh, they each have their own thing that I love about it. This is also from Australia. Bo, hi Bo. Uh, how do you keep fit and healthy while doing a show such as Iceman that is so physically and mentally demanding? Mm. Well, you told me to eat chocolate. Is it high? Yeah, you said have chocolate waiting. Um, so get done with the That's show. That's my and answer. Eat a little bit. Of um, yeah, fit and healthy. Um, yeah, I, I found it interesting. One, the actor um, who played, who who was my my roommate in the theater, uh, his name's Neil, and he. Uh, he, he told me that if he doesn't run in the morning, he doesn't feel that his emotions are, are there um, a, as fully. So I started trying that out, and I think it, it comes down to 
the breathing and the body. And, and so that was something, as far as keeping fit, I would, I would run or I would do the bike in the morning. And, and there was something, I felt that my cells would wake up in a way. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I then felt more, uh, more sensitive to, to any of the stimulus that I was receiving. Wow. Yeah. This is also from Anna in Australia. Uh, what has been your favorite project you've worked on so far? Oh, that's hard. I, I don't know if that answer that. Um, I mean, the ones that I got to do this last year were definitely <laughs> pretty high. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts, Austin. Anything you want to leave people with? I, you guys are my tribe. That's that. I learned that at a young age, and I'm just so grateful to be a, a part of what we all get to do. And and that, I mean, uh, that you would even be here and, and listening. I, I I've learned so much through the process of just trying to figure this out in front of you all. And I, I'm I'm just uh, thank you, thank you for all, all being a part of this tribe and for creating together. And I look forward to seeing what everybody gets to do. Thank you.